Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome each one of you, especially our visitors and the people who join us on television. Um, if you um, would be so kind and fill out the registration pads in the front of your pew, they are plaques that we really appreciate it. Since Pastor Rinchanz is not here, she has another church commitment in Mitchell, I thought we could have much more fun today, right? But I need a strong woman who keeps me on track, and so I ask Virginia to keep me on track, right? But anyhow, I'd like to start with a question. If somebody would ask you, what nationality does God have, what would you tell him or her? It's a trick question. What nationality does God have? And how can you prove it? How can you find out what nationality God has? Well, it's really easy, right? We have two popes, and one is retired, and the other one is not, and the pope is representing Christ on earth. It just happened that one pope is German, and the other one is Argentinian. I comes from Argentina, right? And as you know, today is a soccer game, and Germany plays against Argentina, and whoever will win, is probably, I think, the divine interference has something to do with it. Don't you think so? We will see. Theoretically, I thought about it. It should be a really tight game. And then it should be decided in penalty, and God will flip a coin, because he, can, he would probably say, well, I don't care, right? Could be either or. I don't know. Well, anyhow, <laughs> please, um, Join me for the confession and forgiveness on page five. And please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work, within us and this world. Before God, and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. God of glory, God of peace, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away and you are made new. So be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We may move around and share God's peace with one another.
Please join me for the prayer of the day, which is found on the celebrate insert. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated while we receive the offering. Our offering song is in your celebration book on page 30, Thy Word. God's word is taken from the book of Isaiah 55. Good morning. Today, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. For as the rain and snow came down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. 
Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. We now have special music by Virginia Lemmy and Joel Brick. This morning is from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live accordingly to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. 
Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit of life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Please rise for the gospel. The Gospel reading is to take, is to, from today is taken from Matthew 13. It's called the parable of the sower, the person who sows seeds. But um, I think that's misguiding. You should call it the parable of the different soils. And maybe at the end of the Gospel you can name the different soils. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And Jesus taught them many things in parables, saying, listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly. Since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone who with ears listen. And then Jesus continued saying, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown into the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the world, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I'd like to ask the children to come, and um, let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, and I know tells me so, great the ones who give me love, they are me, but he is strong, yeah. I'm so glad to see you. 
I brought you something. What, what do you see here? What, what do I have here? I just potatoes, right? I cannot believe they are pretty nice. I just picked them two days ago. So what do you think, what do you have to do to plant potatoes? Put a seed into the ground. That's true. Usually, you put a seed into the ground. I have a lot of seeds here. Most of them are from Mustangs um, seed. Not that I want to make some commercials, but I think those are beans, for instance. Then you have little tiny seeds, like lettuce seeds or, or um, carrot seeds. And so you take them into the ground. What about if I would just put them on the road? It wouldn't have to put them into the ground. Why not on the road? Or why not here? I thought we would plant some seeds, some beans tonight, today. Needs water and soil. Really? That's strange. Now Jesus is telling a story today. He tells a story about somebody who went out to sow I don't know what, maybe beans. And some of those bean seeds fell on the path, right, on the street. And so, like you said already, because you are smart, nothing will grow, right? And some seeds fell between rocks. What happened with them? What do you think? It may grow, right, but not, not really high. Because when the sun came, right, did you ever see some, some plants that grow between, well, on, on the sidewalk, for instance, right, when there's a little crack in the sidewalk? But they are not really healthy plants, right? Because the sun will dry them out. And then some seeds fell in between the weed. What is happening with those, with those usually? It just happened to my flowers. What do you think what happened? When you have, when your weeds are so big and your little flowers are so big, what do you have to do? You have to pull the weed if you can, right, or cut it, so that the other plants, the good plants, get some sun, right? Otherwise, they don't have what they need to grow. And some seeds, they fell into really great soil, perfect soil. And what happened to them? They grew and they brought us 100 times more seeds and more fruits and more fresh veggies. Some only 30 or 20, but they all produced something. So why do you think that Jesus, why, why did Jesus tell us that story? It's like us. Wow, you should become a pastor one day. It's like us. You no, know, Jesus says it's the word of God. You know, what we do here, we hear the word of God. It's like the seed, right? And God plants that seed into our hearts. And so we are like that soil. But somebody, some people never understand it. You know, you may hear the word of God, but you don't get it, but you get it. But some don't. So what do we have to do in order to understand it? If you don't understand something, what should we do? You have, yeah, first of all, we have to sit down and study it a little bit, right? Study the word. You do that in Sunday school. And if you still don't understand it, there are so many things that I don't understand yet. I ask questions. I go to people who are smarter than me, like Pastor Constanze, right? I ask her, hey, do you know what that means, right? And maybe she doesn't know, and then she goes to the bishop. And maybe if that doesn't work, I have to ask all the other people. And together, we will come up with something, right? Something that makes sense. And so I'd like to thank you so much. I think God encourages us today not to forget him. To come to church, to Sunday school, to pray, to take time for him, so that our seeds, well, his seeds of his word can grow in our lives. Let us pray. Dear Father, I thank you so much for all those children. I ask you, please, 
let the seeds of your word, of your love, and of your grace grow strong in them so that they discover who they are and whose they are. Amen. Thank you. Have a nice day. <coughs>
I go out into my garden, I take an entire bag, and sometimes two bags, and I do nothing else than blowing the seeds through the air. Then I water it, and sure enough, the next spring, the lettuce is coming out. And it's like a carpet of, of, of lettuce. Sometimes, if you are unlucky, you have to read it a little bit. But most of the time, it's like grass. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's great and healthy. But anyhow, the point I'm trying to make is this. No matter what shape those seeds are, no matter how pitiful and tiny they are, all it takes for them is what? What do you have to do to make them grow? What do they need? Now, all they take is good soil, right? Good soil, warm weather conditions, water, time, and maybe a little tiny bit of miracle crow, right? Just a little bit. That's all it takes, and those little tiny seeds will burst forth with life. Dear friends, coming back to today's gospel. In regard to today's gospel, I'm wondering, did it ever occur to you, did it ever occur to you that Christians and gardeners have at least one thing in common? Did it ever occur to you that Christians and gardeners are called, encouraged, invited by Christ to participate in what I would call setting life free? Setting life free? Just think about it. There's all this life around us. And there's all this life within us laying dormant and just waiting, just waiting to be released. And then there is that life force greater than you, greater than me, greater than all of us put together. And this untapped life is just waiting to be touched by Christian gardeners. All we have to do is what? Plant. All we have to do is place those seeds into the ground. And the rest is up on God or up on the soil, or up on the weather conditions, up on all those things that you and I cannot control. Just think about it. You cannot control how much it, how much it rains, right? When our farmers put their seeds in, in spring, they don't know if it will be a hot summer or a cold summer. They have no clue if it will hail or not. The only thing that they are in control of, well, it's simplified now, really simplified. <laughs> but the only thing is that they are in control of is to put the seed into the ground. And many, many other factors are beyond their control. I don't know about you, but I find that extremely liberating. Extremely liberating to realize that I am not in control of many things. Why? Well, let's take me for instance. As a pastor, I'm only in control to preach the good news, right? I'm only in control, that's my job to remind you of who you are. It's my job 
to tell the good news of God's unconditional love to all, right? But whether or not people will come or not is beyond my control. So when the churches are empty in summer, fortunately they are not today, it's beyond my control. So I don't have to waste my energy to think about it. My job is to preach the good news. Other people's job is to come. Or let's parenting. Let's, let's um, talk about parenting, for instance. As a parent, I'm only responsible to give my children some spiritual guidance or some support, whatever I can do. But I am not responsible what my children or teenager do with that. So they may embrace our spiritual inheritance, heritage, our spiritual legacy, or they may go a totally different walk in life, path in life. It's not in my control. And I think that's really liberating. Because sometimes our children are can, may be disappointing, right? Could happen. And then I know so many parents who beat themselves up because they, are, they feel guilty. Why did my, my children end up in prison? Why do they struggle with addictions? Well, it may have nothing to do with you. It's beyond your control. The only job that you have is to love them unconditionally. That's all what we can do. To tell them and to remind them how much we care. Everything else doesn't matter. As a teacher, I'm only called to do everything in my power to inspire some spiritual growth in our children, or some academic growth, or physical growth, or character growth. But what our children do with it, it's beyond our control. And quite often, maybe you don't see any results as a teacher. But 20 years later, those students may come back and tell you that you made all the difference. You don't know. Anyhow, I think today's gospel, you can interpret it. It wasn't Jesus' intention, but you can interpret it that it's our job to plant seeds. But we have to trust God what will come out of that. You can apply it in so many different, different areas. Business, for instance. Maybe you wake up in the morning and you have a brilliant business, business idea. But if you don't plant the seed, if you don't invest into those ideas, nothing will grow. And yes, you may fail after you did everything that you could. You still may fail. The hail and the storms may come and wipe everything out that you have. But if you don't put the seed into the ground, it will never, ever happen. It's true for communities, for schools, for churches, and for our private life. Anyhow, I think the second dimension, and Jesus put an emphasis on that, is the soil, right? And I think that was Jesus' point, that we have to make sure that we are good soil, right? Which means that we have to do everything in our power to be receptive to God's word. I don't know what I can tell you how to be more receptive. The standard answers are, well, you have to come to church, right? You have to study God's word, you have to have devotions, you should pray, you should connect with God, you should have a dialogue with him. All those things are true. But I think it goes so much further than that. Being a Christian is a lifestyle. 
what we do on Sunday mornings has to be translated into every aspect of our life. The more you grow, the more sensitive you become that your life choices matter. The food that you eat may make you more receptive. If you drink too much, if you party too much, you may become less receptive. If you don't get enough sleep, you cannot be receptive to God's grace. It's impossible. So I think being a good stu uh, soil is a matter of self-care. We, we are called today and encouraged to care for ourselves and to care for our children and for everyone who is entrusted in us. That's the only way how we can turn bad soil into good soil. I want to conclude by saying that, you know, what kind of, or by asking, what kind of soil are you? What kind of soil am I? Well, the good news is, if you are really honest, sometime, sometimes we are that great soil, right? That produces hundred times, hundredfold of fruits. But sometimes we are like that path, right? The soil, well, the seed comes into our soul, but nothing happens. And so before you go home and you feel guilty, don't, you don't have to. Because I think the good news is that we all represent all kinds of soils. It just depends on the time of the season. Right? Sometimes we are open to God's word, sometimes we understand it, and sometimes we don't. But still, nevertheless, God calls us today to do everything in our power to make sure that we are receptive to his word and that we spread it out. So go and plant some seeds and then invite everybody to church and remind them how much God loves us all. Amen. We are going to continue with the spirit of the living God. That's a song number 34.
us with care. Let's bring our hopes and needs to God who listens. Merciful God, we give your word to guide, correct, teach, and inspire. Draw us into your story and give us wisdom, understanding, and obedient hearts as we follow your Son, Jesus, our Lord, in your mercy. The amazing cycle of birth, growth, and death sustains your creation. Bring forth an abundant harvest. Keep farmers safe and teach us to cherish life in all its forms and stages. Lord, in your mercy. In places of war, bring peace. And in places of hatred, so love. We ask you, please, bring peace to the Middle East, especially to the Palestine and Israel, in the region of Israel. Lord, in your mercy. We live in a land of plenty, and still there are those without enough to eat. Give us generous hearts and those who are hungry to those who are hungry. Bless the hands of those who work so that others might eat. Lord, in your mercy. Raise up leaders for your church who will tend to your harvest. We lift up seminaries and church colleges, bishops and synod staffs, Lutheran World Relief and the Lutheran World Federation as they live out their callings to serve. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, confident that all things are in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father in heaven, allowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There's an insert in your um, bulletin. It's called Miracle, Miracle Treat Days at the uh, Dairy Queen on August 14th. And we are always involved. It's a great opportunity to sow, to sow some seeds, right? To reach out to our community. And so we need, like every year, people who would work at the tattoo table, for instance, or, or face painting table a water balloon toss, or there's a water station, or a duck, duck pond, or whatever. And if you could uh, pray about it, or think about it, or if you even are able to do it right now, fill it out. Um, then you could come and volunteer, and then um, you can drop it in our, at our office, or here into the offering plate, or whatever, or give it to me 
that I will pass it on. This would be really great. And then, if you are interested in soccer, um, I'm going to watch it today. Um, I know that Paul invited all his friends. If you would like to come, uh, you can, but I cannot guarantee that we... I don't have a huge TV. I only have a little TV. But anyhow, you are all invited. I think the game is one. when, Paul? At one? At two? I think it was at one. Two? Well, you have to look it up. But uh, it's really interesting. And I don't make any predictions. I don't know who will win. I think both teams are really great. Chances are it will be a boring game because uh, that's often the case. Uh, because there's so much at stake that they are scared to death. But hopefully it's exciting. Well, that's often how it is, right? And um, there's much more, there are more important things than soccer. Hard to believe, but sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that. The sending song is Lord, I lift your name on high, number 60. And thank you so much, praise team, for providing that wonderful music today. Please rise. <coughs> Thank you.